Hey, what's going on everyone? We're here for the very first video here in the ZHP garage. I'm here with the master mechanic today and we're going to be working on this 3.4 liter Toyota Tacoma. We're going to be changing the timing belt and we're just going to jump right into it. So here we go. Alright, we're going to start underneath the vehicle today. We're going to start with taking, on, taking the skip plate off. Should be 7 12 millimeter bolts. All these uh, socket size, bolt sizes are uh, as long as it's still factory. We can go ahead and take the skid plate off, get it out of the way. We can drain the coolant from the petcock of the radiator. When we initially open it, there's going to be a vacuum on the system. So it'll start to drain and then it'll slow down. So then we have to open the radiator cap. We take off the upper hose. You want to make sure to twist it to break it loose, the seal, or else you could damage your radiator. Go ahead and work them off easily. We're going to take the fan shroud out. It's four 10 millimeter bolts. Normally, there'd be an axis on the bottom of the shroud to slide it up, but this vehicle is missing it, so it, didn't, it wasn't shown. We're going to break loose the four nuts. 12 millimeter nuts for the fan while the belts were still on. Now we're going to take off the power steering belt. Just work it around the fan. And if you plan on reusing your belts, make sure you keep them in order because they are different. Then you have to go underneath take off the air conditioning belt another reason for taking the skid plate off then we're going to go back up top get the alternator belt out of the way and then remove it the same way by working it around the the radiator fan cooling fan Now we're going to take the fan off, take the four nuts that we loosened up prior. We're going to take them all the way off and the pulleys. There's two pulleys. You can uh, stick on there at times, so you just kind of work it side to side. But be careful because you don't want to fly off and hit the radiator. Now we're going to remove the six 10 millimeter bolts for the upper timing cover. And then we're going to remove the uh, clips for the plug wires. There's a locking tab on the bottom side, so you got to reach underneath, release the tab. And then there's a clip in the passenger side there for the uh, cam sensor. So the alligator clip you got to get from the back side and release it. Remove the cover. Now we're going to take the bracket off, the adjuster bracket for the power steering pump and the eyeliner pulley for the fan. Those are all 14 millimeter nuts and bolts. We're going to remove this dipstick tube 10 millimeter bolt to gain access later for the bypass to get the hose off the bypass of the water pump. We're going to rotate the engine around to get it on top dead center. There's a little groove in the crank pulley. You line up with the timing cover on zero. Right there. Then you want to check your marks on your cams. There's a groove on the pulley. It matches a groove on the rear of the, the rear cover, the back cover of the cams. You need to use a. This is a chain wrench. I'm using to hold the 
crank in place to break the dampener bolt loose is really tight. There's other options of ways of holding it. But after we break it loose, you want to double check and make sure the crank didn't rotate. So double check that you're still on zero and your timing marks are all lined up. Now we're going to remove the bolt. So if it's pulley won't come off, you can use a puller, but you want to install the bolt a little bit. If you pry on it, you pry it side to side carefully and you can work it off, but the bolt keeps you from the, the pulley flying all the way off. So if it sticks, you can pry. Just be careful where you're prying. Now you want to take the two 10 millimeter bolts for the lower wiring harness bracket out of the way to gain access to the four bolts on the lower timing cover. And also by removing the bracket for the harness, it helps later to remove the tensioner. You can remove the upper eyelid pulley. It's a 12 millimeter. Oh, sorry, 14 millimeter bolt. Remove the timing belt. We're going to remove the tensioner pulley. It's a 10 millimeter Allen. And be careful when you take off the tensioner pulley that there's a washer that's behind it that is uh, supposed to be there. So make sure it doesn't fall and get lost. Make sure that it goes back in this little washer here. Very important. Now the tensioner, you get the front bolt from the top and you use a wobbly. The factory procedure says you have to take off the air, air conditioning compressor, but if you use a wobbly socket, you can get it from underneath, move the harness out of the way, you can get the other bolt out. You take the tensioner off. Then make sure there's a little rubber grommet. It gets stuck in there sometimes. You make sure to pop that guy out of there. Now we're taking out the seven water pump bolts, 12 millimeter, and then there's three thermostat housing bolts or nuts. We need to remove now. Take note that there's a harness that goes on the upper thermostat housing. Get your harness is put it aside. Take your thermostat housing and just put the hose to the side. That's the bypass hose. Do we need to get off? That's why we move the dipstick out of the way. Pull your thermostat out. This vehicle, we're going to reuse the thermostat. So we put that, save that. Get a Push the dipstick over a little bit to clear the bypass. Not all vehicles have a bypass, but this one does, obviously. Remove the water pump. I like to use a razor blade. Just hold it flat and scrape it to clean up all the debris, all the old gasket material, dirt and whatever. Then I rinse it with some clean water. You don't really want to use a cleaning chemical like a brake cleaner because it'll damage and dry out the crank seal. So just wipe it down, make sure it's dry and clean. Then there's these two dowel pins the, the gasket sits on. So you want to make sure it doesn't get pinched. Make sure it's actually seated over them. The three uh, studs for the thermostat housing help to align it. Then uh, make sure the water pump ceiling surface is clean and dry. Line up the studs and slide it on. Again, you have to move the dipstick tube over to clear the bypass nipple. Just seat it all the way and hold it so it stays seated. Put the seven 
12 millimeter water pump bolts in. So after you get all the water pump bolts in, I like to run them down by hand. Put your bypass hose on and then your clamp and make sure you line your clamp up, the spring clamp where it was previously or else you can have a sealing issue. Put the new gasket on the thermostat because we're reusing the old one in this vehicle. And take note of the little vent on the thermostat right there that it needs to go to the top when it's installed so the air pockets are able to get uh, bled out of the system. Then make sure that the ceiling surface for the thermostat cover is clean. Slide it over the studs, reinstall your harness bracket, and then install your four 12 millimeter nuts. Torque it all to 14 foot pounds. I like to go around it twice just to make sure everything's seated because if you go around once, then where you started the, nut, the bolts or nuts can be can be a little little light on the torque so just go around it twice to make sure it's all seated properly So we're going to reuse our bolts, obviously, our new tensioner. And there's a groove in the cover for the pin to go in. You leave the pin in the tensioner, and it'll slide up in there. You install the front bolt on top just by hand, just snug to hold it in place. Then you're going to get your uh, extension with your wobbly on there, 12 millimeter. And then you're going to sneak it past in between the compressor, the AC compressor, and the harness. It's a little tricky, but you, you don't have to take the harness, you don't have to take the compressor off. And then you reuse the bolt and the tensioner. And see how it gets a little seized in there? It gets like uh, corrosion. Clean it off. Just put a little bit of grease on there to lube it so it stays free and doesn't get corroded, corroded again. Slide it in and just wipe off the excess. Then make sure to put the washer on the back side of it. And using your 10 millimeter Allen, you're going to install it and torque it to 26 foot pounds. Then once it's torqued, just uh, you know, make sure everything moves freely. It should just float there. And as he marks on the new timing belt location, so he's got the crank, and left and right cam, and arrows. So the arrow goes forward. So it lines up with the grooves on the pulley. The left cam. So left side and right side of the engine is determined by the sitting in the driver's seat. So the right cam's passenger side. Crank has a little dot on it. We line it up. Air goes to the front. So you line it up with the dot. Arrow to the dot. And then you fall. We're going to reuse the bolt for the upper idler pulley. Then now the belt's on. We install the bolt for the upper idler. Torque it to 30 foot pounds. Then now that all the pulleys and everything are on, 
You want to double check your tummy marks. So left cam to right cam lines up with the grooves. Grooves line up with the back cover. Go around tensioner and you double check your crank. With everything's lined up, you pull the pin out. And the shim has to go on before the lower cover and the radius goes to the uh, timing belt side. If you have a flip, it's going to dig into the timing belt, so make sure that the radius goes to the timing belt. And then make sure that the keyway lines up, that it doesn't get stuck up. So line the keyway up on the crank, and it's just slide up tight to the pulley. Install the lower four bolts in the cover, timing cover, 10 millimeter. Install your dipstick bolt, 10 millimeter. Your lower harness, your two bolts, 10 millimeter, and your lower harness bracket. Then you're gonna install your idler water pump, or your fan idler. and your bracket and tensioner for your power steering. Again, our, the nuts and the bolts are 14 millimeter. There's a little groove there that that pin lines up with. And when you put the crank pulley on, make sure you line up the keyway and then it goes on all the way then you're going to install the lower bolt and you can double check your timing marks. Make sure everything's still lined up. The lower bolt, the crank bolt, you want to torque to uh, 217 foot pounds. Just double check before you put your upper cover on. Install the upper timing cover and the six 10 millimeter retaining bolts. Then you push in the, re the clip for the harness cam sensor and your brackets for your plug wires. Then you're going to install the two pulleys on the idler and the cooling fan and the four 12 millimeter nuts. Just run them down snug. Then you put the belts on in reverse order. So we're going to start with the alternator belt. Then the air conditioning belt. Then the power steering belt. And if you have any questions on how tight, leave it a little loose. Because over tightening, you can damage the engine parts. You can always adjust it later. Install the fan shroud with the four 10 millimeter bolts. Take note of the upper radiator hose that it can go in the wrong way. If you have it flipped, it'll hit the fan shroud. So the proper way is not is, is away from the fan shroud. Install the clamps and make sure that you line them back up in the same spot that they were before. We'll avoid any hose leaking. You want to fill and burp the system. Make sure after you install the belts that you want to tight, double check the uh, four nuts on the idler for the fan for the cooling system and bring the oper operating temperature in order to fill the cooling system properly so the thermostat opens. If there's anything we did not cover in this tutorial, please let us know down in the comments. Alright everyone, thank you for watching the video. If you did, enjoy the content and if it was helpful to you, don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more. And if you have any uh, suggestions or comments, put it in the likes. If you have a uh, if you want to see any uh, how-to videos or builds, put it in the likes and we'll, we'll get it worked in. All right, stay tuned for the next video coming out. We upload currently every Saturday, so just keep looking forward to that. See you guys in the next video.